Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Good morning, brothers and sisters, friends and family. It's good to be here again, sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ with you. Happy Sunday to every single one and welcome to our Sunday ministration. If you are joining us for the very first time, our series of teaching this month of August is titled Harvest Time because it's time to begin to enjoy the dividends of our labor. We have fasted, we have prayed, we have sought the face of God and done all the scriptures commanded us. And therefore, it's time to begin to enjoy the dividends of our labor. The Bible says in the books of Galatians 6 verse 7 that God cannot be mocked and whatever a man soweth, he will also reap. I'm praying that in this season, you shall reap a harvest of goodness, a harvest of mercy, a harvest of God's blessings in the name of Jesus Christ. You shall have an encounter with God today through his word that will leave your life transformed for good in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Now, our topic this morning is titled, A Matter of the Heart. A Matter of the Heart. The Bible makes us understand that the sower go out see, sowing his seed, Matthew chapter 13. And it, there is no discrimination when the seed is sown. But the harvest is dependent on the kind of heart that he falls under. Scripture makes us understand that we should keep our hearts with all diligence. For out of it are the issues of life. Proverbs 4 verse 23. To, uh, 23 rather. So we must understand that our heart plays a key role when it comes to enjoying our harvest. And I want to encourage us this morning that through the words of God, our harvest can come. But we have a responsibility to keep our ground, our hearts, fertile at all times. So that when the word of God comes to incubate or begin to set on our heart, it will take its um, root downwards and bring forth good fruits upwards in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Now shall we pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you glory and honor. We bless you so much. Thank you, Lord, for your mercies, for your compassion. Thank you for peace and joy in our heart. Thank you for surrounding us with your edge of protection, not allowing the enemy to come clear near us. My Lord and my God, I thank you for the visibles and invisible battles that you have fought for us. Blessed be your mighty name. Lord God of heaven, as we sit at your feet to learn your word, open our eyes of understanding and reveal your perfect counsel to us. To the glory and praise of your holy name. In Jesus' precious name. We have prayed. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. The books of Matthew chapter 13. One of the most famous parables that Jesus Christ told in the scriptures. Describes the sowing of the seed. It talks about the sower and it talks about the soil. And the Bible makes us understand that there's no discrimination when it comes to the word of God. The seed falls upon every type of soil without discrimination. But the kind of harvest that it reaps or comes forth from the kind of ground that it falls upon is determined by the soil that it falls upon. Even when it falls upon a good ground, the Bible still makes us understand that some actually reap in 30, some people reap in 60, and some people reap a hundredfold. The, it's important that each and every one of us know that we have a responsibility when it comes to our harvest. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. It is a God will keep your heart for you, and then you will then begin to reap a harvest. There are some misconceptions that we have in the scriptures. What I've seen in this modern day Christianity is that many Christians want to absorb themselves from responsibility but want to enjoy the benefit. If that is the case, then, you know, all of us, none of us will ever do any spiritual work. We won't pray, we won't fast, we won't do anything because we just believe somebody else will do it and then we will enjoy the benefit. And that, that's, that is almost absurd. Because Jesus Christ laid a pattern for us while he was on earth. We could see him constantly praying. We could see him in the temple learning from those who are older than he was and teaching the, the, even the word of God. We could see him going from city to city. We showed an act of diligence, an act of constantly seeking and striving for the best. But in this day and age, many of us simply just do whatever we think is convenient and expect the miracles to happen. 
Now, the Bible is full of mysteries. And we must understand that each and every one of us is responsible for getting the interpretation of the mysteries of God into our lives. I often compare the scriptures to the um, catalog of these um, mail order companies. You have all the pictures, you have all the numbers, but what you order is determined by you. You have the number to call. What you order is determined by you. If you don't believe you need it, you won't order it. But if you believe you need it, then you will order it. Now, when it comes to the word of God and the harvest of the seed, if you don't believe that you need a harvest, then you would not prepare the grounds of your heart. There are all kinds of hearts. We have a careless heart, the casual ones, the carnal ones, and the careful hearts. You see, notice that they all begin with a C. The careless ones, the careless heart, the casual hearts, the carnal hearts, and the careful hearts. What kind of heart do you have? And this is so key when it comes to reaping a harvest. Because if your heart is not ready, then your harvest is not in view. Because first of all, the seed needs to fall upon the grounds of your heart. Some people have been going to church time and time, year upon year, but yet they can see no transformation in their heart. The Bible says, if the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Maybe it's time we begin to check our hearts. Maybe it's time to begin to check our hearts. Now, why do I need to check my heart? Number one, your heart is extremely valuable. Many people don't understand the value the heart plays in their, in their destiny. So they just leave it anyhow. The security around the bank is a lot more than the one around the or dump yard or the junkyard. Why? Because of the treasures that are stored in it. I mean, you can walk into a junkyard pretty much even at night to, dunk, to, to dump your, your junks. And nobody will stop you as long as you're not doing anything silly. But you cannot even walk inside a bank to withdraw money except you're going to an ATM. Because before you say Jack Robinson, the police will be outside the bank waiting for you. And it will be a bank robbery, they will say. Now, if our heart is the source of all things, even physically, our body cannot function without a heart pumping blood through it then how much more when it comes to spiritual things? If you notice, Jesus Christ used the simplest things of the world to teach important um, mysteries of the gospel. The Bible says in the books of Mark chapter 7, if you read verse 20 to 23, the Bible says, What comes out of a man that defiles a man? From what, what comes out of a man that defiles a man? But what comes from within the heart of a man? Because out of the heart proceeds evil thoughts, adulteries, fornication, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, and all kind of evil things because it is within the heart that these things take place. Then we must begin to recognize that our heart is so valuable and it must be a treasure that we, uh, a place that we treasure if we are going to make anything out of our lives. Does heart, number two, the heart is the source of everything we can do in life. The seed, which is the word of God, has the potential to yield thousands of increase. But if the heart is pure, or pure, the soil that is going to fall upon is pure, or sorry, poor rather, then it will have nothing to bring forth, no matter how good the seed is. If your heart is not right, then your harvest is not in view. We've been talking about harvest time, but you see, I think the Lord brings me back and says, Son, begin to look at the foundation. Because this is where the issues of life are discussed. Number three, why do we guide our heart? You see, the heart is constantly under attack. I'm sure you remember the story of Ananias and Sapphira in the books of Acts chapter 5. The Bible says that Peter said, 
He said, Ananias, why has the devil filled your heart to lie? Your heart. Out of it flows the issues of life. When Jesus is carrying betrayed Jesus Christ, his heart has become carnal. He began to worry about the things of the world. That's why he could sell his loyalty for 30 pieces of silver. What is your heart doing right now? Because we must remove every hindrance, resistance or stubbornness. I call them heart blockage. We often sing the song, create in me a new heart. Maybe this is our prayer in this season. To ask God to create in us a new heart. Without our heart being right, we are simply going to keep struggling day after day, night after night. The heart is the soil where the words of God fall, which produces the harvest that we desire. One of the prayers I believe parents to pray at all times is to pray for their children's heart, that it will not be turned from God. You see, when God, when the devil rather wants to bring a man down, he goes after his heart. If you study the story of Solomon carefully, you will discover, I think, in books of Solomon, Second Kings chapter three, that Solomon loved the Lord. First Kings chapter three, rather, loved the Lord. By the time you get to First Kings chapter eleven, I believe he he became he loved strange women. Strange women. So his heart has changed. His heart has gone after the world. I constantly pray that Lord, let my heart be a heart of flesh. Let it be super sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit at all times. Because if my heart becomes hardened, then I can't do the work any longer. When your heart becomes hardened, then you'll find it difficult to obey God. In the, even the simplest thing. So the heart must be guarded at all times. It is extremely valuable to what we are trying to accomplish. Don't allow the poisonous tongues of men and women to come and, you know, adulterate your heart, fill your heart with evil. Don't allow stubbornness, resistance to the Holy Spirit, stop you from enjoying your wealth. Oftentimes, I tell people this. You see, if you leave your treasures unguarded, then the thief will come to steal. John chapter 10, verse 10, the Bible says, the thief cometh to steal, to kill, and to destroy. If your heart is left unguarded, you're not watching where you go, what kind of stuff you listen to, then the thief will enter and he will rob you of your valuables. May that not be your portion in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Now, how do I get my heart guarded? Or how do I guard my heart? Number one, guide your heart by controlling what you see and what you hear. What you see and what you hear. The gates to your heart are your eyes and your ears. So the way to control what your heart, um, what seed that's sown in your heart is true, controlling what you see and what you hear. Now, if you spend most of your time, uh, your time around people who are negative, guess what seed that's going to be sown in your heart? Negative words, exactly. Because once you begin to allow that to infiltrate into the good words of God, sowing so in your heart, when the seed begins to manifest, the tones the Bible talks about begins to choke them out. You wonder why these um, two friends who attend the same church are producing two levels of fruit. Then you should ask him, what kind of heart do you have? Because if your heart is constantly being soaked with negative words, evil communication, corrupt good manners, the Bible says, and you allow yourself to be put down, to be put upon. You, you're looking at all kind of images. I can't remember the man of God. I, I believe it's Smith Wigglesworth. Smith Wigglesworth is known as the apostle of faith. 
He said he never reads a newspaper. Never, ever reads a newspaper. If a man is coming to visit him and he sees a newspaper in his house, he will tell him, leave that thing outside. Well, that's a different kind of faith. Because he doesn't want to be uh, infiltrated with negative news. He believes the only news he needs to hear is from heaven. What, can you, what are you listening to? What are you seeing? Are you spending most of your time in front of the TV instead of reading your Bible and trying to hear what God so, uh, what God's solution is for your season? Control what your ears listen to. Control what you allow to be deposited in your heart. Number two, control what you allow to be deposited into your heart. The Bible says in books of Philippians, chapter 4, verse 8, it says, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever thing has good report, if there be any virtue in it, he said, things that are praiseworthy, he said, meditate upon those things. What kind of treasures are you allowed to be deposited into your heart? Into your, into your heart? You can't walk into a bank and deposit junk. They won't accept it. Because they only accept valuables. If your heart is the bank, then the kind of treasure that you should accept, you must vet it carefully. Number three, be faithful in little. Be faithful in little. You see, many of us are not diligent with our gift enough. We are not plowing our hearts. We are not being diligent. We are not being faithful in little. We expect a massive harvest, but we are not cultivating our heart with little things. In little things, we are too superior. We think to ourselves, we know more than God. We think to ourselves, how does this work? If you do not show yourself faithful in little, then you are not asking for promotion. Remember, it's a matter of the heart, and God is constantly looking at your heart. And he's looking at those whose heart has stayed upon him. Those whose heart has been proven time and time again. That they will remain no matter what. Everybody will have some kind of challenge in life. Everybody. As long as you're living on earth and you're still breathing and eating, you will have challenges. It's as simple as that. So I've come to see challenges as stepping stones for me instead of me looking at them as something that's about to ruin my life. So... My heart is constantly guarded, even in little things, even in challenges. And I'm diligent with my hands to constantly do what he has sent me to do. If you don't get yourself positioned for your harvest, the words of God will come and it will go. And they will be having, you have nothing to show for it. And I pray that's not your portion in the precious name of Jesus Christ. You see, God is not a man that he should lie, not the son of man that he should repent. Whatever he said he would do, surely he would do it. Numbers 23 verse 19. This is a season of harvest. And you must begin to prepare the ground and ensure that your heart is maximized, ready for the increase that's coming your way. Do not procrastinate. As many people do. The Bible says that those who procrastinate are lazy. Proverbs 13 verse 4. So, do not procrastinate to tomorrow what you can do today. Because you don't know what the troubles of tomorrow will be. The Bible says the sufficient is the evil of the day thereof. So, let's get diligent today. Let's get our heart ready today. Let's get our heart prepared today. Let's remove all the weed, all the thorns today. Let's repent from any evil that we have done today. Let's ask God to cleanse us today. Let's remove from our hearts anything that is not of him. Every heart of stone and let it be replaced with the heart of flesh. Number five, I believe now, is surround yourself with encouraging people. Surround yourself being in an encouraging environment. You cannot enjoy um, 
a good harvest without having an encouraging atmosphere. You see, everything around us have ears. Everything around us. I think I've talked about this in the past. The ground that we walk upon has ears. The people, um, the birds of the air has ears. The stone has ears. So everything around you has ears. If you constantly surround yourself with discouraging um, words or discouraging people or the negative environment, guess what? It will bring you down. The Bible says in Proverbs 23, verse 7, For as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So find places where you can use your gift to glorify, glorify God and begin to ask for the grace to use your talent to bring him glory. Because you see, we are going to maximize our potential in this season. This is a year of fulfillment of potential. Your, your potential will be maximized. Your harvest is in view and you will not fail destiny. As I begin to close, what are the benefits of having our heart guarded? Very simple. Even when the seed falls upon a good ground, remember, some still yield in 30, some yield 60, and some yield 100. What kind of harvest do you want? I want 100. Do you want 30? Do you want 60? Because that will determine what you're willing to put in. Don't be casual. Casual people don't make impact in life. Don't be carnal. Carnal people don't make heaven. Be careful. Be diligent. Be focused. What kind of soil is your heart? Has it become hardened against the things of God? Are you committed? Or do you feel distracted? Do you feel burdened? defeated by sin or the cares of the world constantly holding you down. The Bible makes us understand that we should cast all our cares upon him for he cares upon us, or cares for us. So keep focus and have great confidence in God. There's no limit to what God can do in your life. Don't compare yourself with anybody else for you're unique in your own person. You're one of a kind and an original. Don't settle to be being a photocopy. I pray that the words that you have heard this morning will mingle with faith in your heart, and then He will bring forth good fruit in your life. It's a matter of the heart. Let your heart be pure before God, and then you will see Him do wonders in your life. It is well with you, in Jesus' precious name. Shall we pray, Father? In the name of Jesus, we give you glory and honor. We bless your holy name. We thank you so much for your love, for your guidance, your protection. Thank you because you're faithful and there's no one like you. Thank you, Lord God of heaven, for the words we have heard today. And I pray that whatever weed, whatever seed of thorns have been sown in our hearts shall be uprooted this morning in the precious name of Jesus Christ. And I pray for your Holy Spirit to lead us and direct us into the fullness of the harvest that you have prepared for us, to the glory and praise of your holy name. Thank you, Father, for answering our prayers. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise God.